the abscondo podcast hi welcome to the abscondo podcast last week i received some really sad news about my best friend from high school his name was brian tucker and uh, we grew up in a small town in central wisconsin and anyway brian i want to talk about brian a little bit um and i received the news last last monday that he had passed away and and that set me on a journey um you know grieving is a process and you know we hadn't been close for a long time and i want to talk about that about everyone how we have these these old relationships from our youth from high school from even before that from college and you know what is it about relationships that remain real and what gets in the way of that realness and that goodness that we experience in relationships with people friendships with people and I'm talking, of course, about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about even work relationships. You know, whatever it is with anyone, whether it's fun or work-related or um, whether it's teacher-student, whatever it may be, I've come to the conclusion that whatever's real between two people is eternal. It doesn't fade at all, even after decades of almost no contact with someone. You know, so... When I originally found out about Brian, uh, I found out that he had frozen in uh, the woods in Wisconsin and didn't have proper clothes on. So that, that sounded to me a little bit like a suicide, uh, although it might have been some kind of reckless um, sort of fun thing he was up to, which he was known for as well. So I didn't want to make that judgment, but I suspected um, you know, that it might have been suicide, and that was confirmed later in the week. So some interesting things happened um, over the course of this, this past week or so. And, you know, I talk a lot about the concepts and theories of relationships and about how we have to look past our differences and look past the ego and see the truth in one another. I, I talk about this a lot on the Daily Post at Abscondo.com and, and Instagram. But to, this week, I got to experience the reality of what that means. So... This is going to be kind of a wandering <laughs> experience here because there's a lot of topics I want to touch on. First, let's start with this. You know, what's real between two people is eternal. So, you know, think about your best friend from high school or, or you know, your best friend in, in life, whether or not you're still in touch. And what you remember, if, so, if someone passes away, suddenly what you remember are those wonderful things about the person. You don't really care so much about the differences. I mean, you're trying to figure out what happened or, or how they died or you're, you're maybe a little bit angry or upset with how it happened, whether it was an illness or whether it was a suicide or an accident and you just wish it hadn't ended that way and you wish you could have done something different. Yes, there's those thoughts, right? But beyond that, as you start talking about that person, as you start writing about that person and thinking about that person, what you remember is everything wonderful and and so i'm wondering you know at the end of my life you know who's what are people going to say who's going to say what and brian you know he was he was suffering obviously and we and i guess on some level i knew that of course i knew that and i, I did try to reach out to him over the years in fact just a few months ago i tried to make an attempt to connect with him on an honest level and help him although it wasn't as though he was a train wreck he was doing fine he was a teacher um, he was into biking, and he looked like he was doing fine, but he wasn't being honest about something. He wasn't being open about something, and I wish I had done more. So there's these thoughts. But when I think about Brian, the natural impulse was to just talk about what an amazing person he was when I knew him, and I knew he never had changed in those ways. Brian had a way of inspiring people to try new things, to see things differently. He had, he had no interest in trying to be normal. He was not normal. And, you know, when I was in high school, he showed me a whole different genre of music. He made me fall in love with this genre of music. And, well, it, at the time it was, you know, U2, uh, Matthew Sweet, 
R.E.M. a little bit. Um, you know, there were some things like that that we listened to that I was listening to hip hop and, 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 you know, things like that. And he just said, no, you're going to change your taste in music. And, and he made me see the beauty of that music. We, we he lived on a, on a lake in, 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 in the woods in, in Wisconsin. And, we, he cranked up his stereo as loud as it would go, and we swam to the dock in the lake and laid there and listened, as well as all the neighbors listened to, to his music until we liked it. And I did learn to fall in love with that music. Later, of course, I went on to, uh, based on that taste, you know, to end up listening to other bands and, and, and artists that, you know, maybe derive from that sort of genre and making music that way. It changed my life fundamentally. He also sh- forced me to... <laughs> to fall in love with, with mountain biking. And to this day, I still go mountain biking as much as possible, and I have ever since. It changed my life. He, he showed me how to live in a way that I was chasing dreams, that I was open to like beauty and fun. We did so many things. I don't want to go into specifics, but Brian had a, had a lot to do with my approach to life. It's not just about accomplishment. It's not just about... Um, you know, status and, and fitting in and, and getting by. It's about making a mark. It's about living this life the way that you are, the way that you want to, and doing what inspires you. And as I went, I was one of the first people who found out about it from another friend of mine on Facebook. And I started, and I posted something, you know, short about, about how inspiring Brian was to me. And then I started looking around over the next few days, and there were so many other people who considered him a best friend. <laughs> I don't, you know, I have a few other people who I might call best friends, but the point is, he had so many people who thought that they were his best friend, or he was their best friend. And I found out that he he just did this for so many people and extended himself so much to just to just change us and to inspire us, and. Upon his passing, I mean, you can't believe the the outpouring, uh, you know, that my whole class um, came together on Facebook and in person at his funeral. I couldn't make it. I'm I'm living overseas, but um, you know, we came together around around Brian and said so many wonderful, heartfelt things about him and meant every word. And I just think, you know, why couldn't we have said this to his face when he was alive? Why do we treat each other this way that we can't we can't honor we can't we can't celebrate what's great about one another until we die? And you know, so I have to look back and and say you know what happened on my side. I lost touch with all those people from high school, and it meant a lot to me. It was quite a cool group of people. We live all over the world and do all kinds of things, and a lot of them do stay in touch. and And I have to ask myself like. If this happened to me, if I passed away, I don't know. I don't know what they would have said about me, and that disturbed me a little bit. If anyone would care, and then I started thinking about, well, what does it mean to to mean something to to, to other people? You know, um, I, I go off and I do these. All the, I write all this content, and I, and, I, and I make all this stuff, and I create all this stuff. But am I doing enough with actual relationships with actual people? And of course not. We can all do more, right? Um, what happened to me is, as I, as I, you know, left high school. I mean, in high school it's pretty easy. You, you kind of have a lot of friends, and you look past your differences, and you kind of connect on the level of having fun or hanging out or whatever. And it's and it's cool. It's wonderful. And there's this bonding, and it feels like it'll last forever. And then you go, and this is just for me. Maybe maybe it's for college for some people. Maybe it's a job or a, or a gig or for some people or a band or whatever it may be. For me, it was it was high school, where I fit in to some kind of community. And since then, I really haven't. Not not in that way. And what happened is is you know we go off in, um, you know we 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 go to college. We we start our careers. We 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 go off and do whatever it is we do. We stay in our hometowns. Or we leave our hometowns. We have all these differences, and we're focused in our early twenties and all throughout our twenties and even beyond that through our thirties. We're focused on all these things that the world tells us is so important, like you know like chasing money, chasing status, chasing chasing possessions. You know all these these things that we're supposed to care so much about. And because we learn to care so much about these things, we look at ourselves, we evaluate ourselves based on where we are, and we compare ourselves to one another, 
And when we try to, to reach out to our old friends, we judge. And we try, we might have, have a drink with our old friends and meet up after years, and we look at our differences. We look at, well, you didn't leave the town I did, or, or you think you're better than me, or you have more money, or you're, you know, you're overweight and, I'm, and I'm, I'm fit. And we look at all these differences, and we disconnect. We lose, that, we lose the ability to have a relationship because we're so focused on these differences. Of course, this is ego. Ego sees only differences between people and how we're separate. But something happened just a few days ago with, with all these people, and we're, we're, now, we're now about 45 years old, all of us, and something happens when you get a little bit older, at least it seems that way to me, you know, you need you need a facilitator. You need someone or some people to take to make it okay. But we started, and I and you know I started. Many others did as well. But from my perspective, I'll tell you what my perspective. You know, I, I put a post on Facebook, kind of kind of explaining um, how I feel about all this and about how I feel about all these people and all these memories and all these wonderful people, these beautiful memories and all these th- things about people that I that I used to know. And I don't want to wait until we all die before we express it. And I just want to say that, I, that I'm that i the same person. I, I remember all these things, all these wonderful things, these moments with people. And I want to talk about what I think makes a moment special or what these memories or what makes a memory special with someone, the kind that live forever. But what I found out is that when I started talking about that and we all started talking about that, we all came together. These people that I hadn't communicated with for, you know, for God knows how long, I mean, decades, started to communicate as though we were exactly the same people from all different backgrounds. It didn't matter. We were communicating these truths and accepting one another completely. And it was so beautiful. It was really beautiful. And, and I, wish, I wish Brian had, had seen it and experienced it. Um, just being open about our feelings and saying, damn, you know, I haven't done enough. I haven't, I haven't been around you guys, but I still remember all that wonderful stuff. And it's still real for me, even though you might think I changed. And, and of course, we do change. And that's the other thing about this that, that I find so interesting is that, you know, I was also thinking um, about how people change. Like, maybe if you know someone when you're 21 years old, Maybe you were in a relationship with someone and then you lose touch or you break up and then, you know, 10 years later you try to reconnect. Unfortunately, a lot of times you try to treat that person as though they're the same person as they were then and they're not, right? We change so much um, because we've been through so much. We've learned so much. We've grown. We've just gone through stuff and we're just a different, we're different people with more experiences and more knowledge and and, and so you have to respect that about people also. You can't just treat them as the silly uh, person they were back then, just as you wouldn't want them to do that to you. Um, you know, you've been through stuff. So there's this, and that's a humbling thing to realize, that on one hand, you, you know, you have to, you naturally honor, um, you honor that person, you honor the memories what's real about your relationship and who they are and what you value about them. On the other hand, you have to give them so much space and acceptance for just being so freaking different from you um, and and just not not treating them, not putting them into a box. And I think everyone ha- makes that mistake with, our, with people from our past as well. So you have to, on one hand, just be open to like, wow, like, who are you? And yet you know you share this meaningful connection, maybe not the same exact memories, but the basic, you know, you're valued for certain reasons and that person's valued for certain reasons. And that can be celebrated, even if two people are very, very different in the present moment. So let's talk about what it is, I, what I believe, and I don't know the answer for sure, but it feels to me that what makes, what makes a relationship eternal is how you inspire a person. You know how you change a person. For the you know in a positive way. And I think so often we get into the situation where we're trying to be normal and trying to be cool and trying to fit in or trying to not rock the boat or not cause anybody to get upset or so forth. But at the end of your life, the question kind of becomes what did, what did that person mean to me? How did that person change my life? 
And everything else about that person just sort of fades away. You don't really care about your differences when you look back um, on a light on a lifetime or uh, of a person. You don't know everything about that person. You, you actually know, you know very little. But you know. But if we're if we're living in our best as our best selves, we want to inspire people to love more to see more beauty, to experience more beauty, to become happier, wiser, um, to be more open and accepting, to be more forgiving, to have better taste, (laughs) Um, to chase their dreams, to follow their passions. And if we can do this in our lives, we have just such a massive network of people who are there because because of what we've given already, the real value we've given. And it's about moments that you make a person that you can change lives, and you really can. I mean, it happens to me all the time. Doesn't it happen for you? You know? So often we get caught up in our differences and the problems between people. I mean, especially with exes, with friends, we judge. We say we focus on all the reasons why the relationship doesn't work. But man, what if what if that person passed away? And you really had to think about who was that person and what would you say about that person in an obituary? Why can't we connect on that level while we're alive? We can. And it feels good. And and my my class, good old class of ninety three from high school, um, experienced it where there, you know we all came together and nobody was nobody was saying anything negative. There was always just beautiful positive expressions of of love about Brian and about one another. And you know we all feel like we wish we could have done something for Brian as well as his his you know other people in his life after high school, of course, are also involved in this. Um, but you know, we couldn't because Brian wasn't, wasn't being open about what, what he was feeling, what he was going through. He probably had a lot of secrets that we don't know that he wasn't telling and he felt trapped and, you know, suicide obviously isn't the answer for anyone because our being is eternal. Our souls are, are eternal. It's not a solution to anything. I don't know what happens after death to, to a suicide, but I know that there's no escape from from the reality of our of our infinite being, you know. And if Brian had just said what he was going through and just said he needed help, I would have been there. And I think I think hundreds of other people would have been there for him. Um, I think, but you know, I don't know. I I, I lost touch because he wasn't open. I tried to communicate, and he wasn't being open. He wasn't accepting me. And. He just stopped responding, and that's normal. Everybody just is, you know, is close to, to people who are different, and, and it doesn't have to be this way. Um, you know, anyone out there listening to this who is suffering on that level or close to that level, I'm offering my, I'm extending myself to you one on one without any expectations, you know, about what I want in return. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but I, I want to help. I want to change your life. I want to be here for you. And I want to show you the beauty of life. And I want to inspire you. And I want, and that's why I do all this. That's why I do this podcast. I do all the posts. I do the music, you know, the, the film, every, you know, whatever I'm doing, it's not always great. I know that. I do my best to, to, um, to touch some lives and I want to do more on a one-on-one basis with more people as well. Sometimes you get kind of stuck in your bubble. Um, yeah, that was I know it's a little bit of a different kind of a podcast uh, today. It's been a very emotional week, but you know, it's not just in theory that 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 a relationship between two people is eternal. I, I see the reality of it. Brian is just as much alive to me as he ever was, more so even. And I think everyone feels that way about, about him. And, I, and it's interesting that we know it's never going to fade. And now I'm talking about this on this podcast and a few more people will hear about Brian and he extends himself even further even though he's passed away. 
But the question for anyone is, you know, how are you, how are you living? You know, are you living in a way that you're extending truth and beauty and inspiration and health and healing to as many people as possible? Because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, that's what's eternal about you. You know, the size of your house isn't going to, to, to win, you, win you too many real friends or, or establish anything real or the, what kind of car you drive. And that's it's just not the way we're living, most of us, at least not enough. Now, I know we're all caught up in, in trying to deal with our challenges and survive. I totally get that, and that's been my experience. I mean, of course, I have very real issues to take care of. I'm not going to sit here every day and talk about, about love and inspiration and beauty because that's not the way life is, is it? But, but if we can try to maximize our ability to do that, to prioritize that somewhere, because it is the most important thing, our eternal being what we're here to do is our most important thing in life. And if we can honor that somewhere in the mix of everything else we have to do, and that goes with, 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 you know, with lovers and spouses and children and every, every relationship we have, can you be that person? You can be your freakish self. You can do whatever, you know, and this is what I always talk about. Just follow your intuition. Do what feel what you want to because you're teaching people to follow their inspiration too. And it feels good when you do that. Don't harm anyone, obviously. But think about what harm actually is. Harm isn't someone else getting jealous or upset with you. Harm is actually physically or in some way emotionally harming someone uh, with the intention of harming them. You doing what you have to do in life, being who you are and following your dreams is not doing harm to anyone. That's your right. And if anything, you should be more open about it and bring people along and show them, teach people that it's okay to do. Teach people to accept who you are and what you want and your truth. And then teach them that their truth is also okay and accept them in return. And do it loudly. And, and life just goes to the next, next level. The relationships, I mean, this is what's broken in the world, our relationships. Everybody's, you know, isolated and hiding from one another. And, and um, yeah, it doesn't have to be that way at all. But it's up, on, it's up to you. That's the cool thing about it. Create those moments. Say those things. Do those things. Show people the way that you know to be true. So at the end of every podcast, I... I I put one of my one of my songs, an abscondo song, and this is a good one. I'll leave you with a kind of relevant song to to what you know we're talking about here, and it's from the album Victory in a Landlocked Sea, and the song is Victory in a Landlocked Sea by Abscondo. All those years, all the same. Those fears all in vain. Yes, he 
Oh. Uh-huh.